welcome to Icy Kicks on today's show. Well, we carry on with the Dino Blaster build. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll put a link up here to where we basically replace the body. Um, the original body that it came with was this one, which is in pretty good condition, but was the wrong colors. So I replaced it with another one that I've painted up and it's box art, um, exactly as it should be, original stickers, so I finished that and it came out really well and I'm really chuffed with it. Now I've got a few spare bits and pieces to go on the car because this car has been run before. So there is some uh, rash marks and things like that on the underside. Not too many, but uh, a few. So I've managed to be able to find the parts to replace them. So that's the plan. Then once I change that, because I've actually got a brand new chassis, is then to put the electronics in it and get it alive and running again. So in this episode, I'm going to change out all the bits and pieces. Um, I've got chassis, carbon plates, uh, rear motor cover, bumpers. I've got reinforced um, upright hubs for the ends because one of these is split. <coughs> um, the notorious bit, the swing arm mount tends to break, so I've got a few of those. I've got a load of new screws to fit. Some haven't turned up yet, unfortunately, but I can go back and I can retro do that. So I'm not that fast. So let's crack on and turn this Dino Blaster back to mint condition. Now, I know a few of you have been saying, don't do it, leave it as it is, uh, and things like that. But these are all genuine original parts because this car was never reread, nor was the Dino Storm. So I'm basically replacing like for like. There is no re-re parts in this whatsoever, so it doesn't really change anything. Um, if anything, it's I'm basically restoring it to exactly as it would be when it came out of the box, versus a few bits and pieces that have been changed over the lots and lots of years this car's been out. Right, let's crack on, let's dismantle it, and the first thing's going to be to replace the chassis. As you can see, the car's done some work in its life. Some of the screws were incorrect. Also, there were some random pink uh, bolts used that I wasn't very impressed with, so they had to go. Stripping it down, it was quite dirty. Um, nothing super special. Didn't have any problems with any uh, rounded off screws or anything like that. There was no damaged parts on the back of the car. There was one spacer that was missing and replaced by a yellow random bit of plastic, so I changed that out. The Superstock motor didn't come with the kit, I fitted that myself. When I purchased the car, it came with aftermarket wheels, so I managed to find some Dyna Blaster wheels and tyres online, so I've added these previously. As you can see, the gearbox is mint. I don't think the car's done much running at all, so I was really happy with the condition. I've now replaced the motor guard, also fitted a new under tray plate and replaced some of the screws. Okay, right, I've dismantled the car and I started focusing on the rear gearbox section. The uh, main plate that holds the rear to the chassis. So I've replaced that, replaced the back protection uh, motor guard. Um, also I've cleaned everything I can, I've re-greased. I've changed this plate cover and the end. These don't seem to be very tight, I'm not quite sure why. I've got a few of them and none of them are tight. They all wobble, so I don't understand when you're driving it around, that's just going to fall out. So I need to do a bit more research on that one to see what's going on with that, because I don't quite understand. Um, the gearbox in this is absolutely mint, so no problems there. Um, I'm trying to replace as many screws as possible, um, and remove all the old ones and replace the new ones. Unfortunately, I did have some coming that haven't arrived yet, but I can go back and I can fill those in as and when. 
no uh, issues, nothing broken, nothing cracked or anything like that. So let's keep going. I polished up the brass ball knuckles and also the uh, link arms just to brighten it up and get rid of some corrosion that was on it. So that's the rear end all refreshed, all the parts replaced. I also oiled everything, cleaned everything up. Um, the only thing left to do on this is these rear wheels have a lot of plays. They definitely need shimming. <laughs> I've just been told I've got a shipment arriving today from Amazon. <laughs> so uh, they need shimming, but I don't have any shims because there's so much play in these bottom knuckles that uh, I will have to shim them up properly to get them to run much smoother. And they actually kind of clip because they move so much, they actually clip the wheel slightly. So there's a little bit of a clonk in there. So I've definitely got to dial that out before I can run it. But uh, it's all done, all nice and uh, refreshed and cleaned and replaced everything I can. So there's now no damage underneath whatsoever. I was going to replace these rear arms, but uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. There's no scratches on them at all. So I am happy with that. So now we have to turn our attentions to the chassis and the front section. As that is done, I don't want to drop it. So next is remove this part of the chassis. There's a servo that needs to be removed. And then I'll refresh the front pretty much like I did. I have got front swing arms. I'm gonna try and get rid of these pink bolts if I can help it. I don't have the correct front springs. So I'll have to put these blue ones back in until I can source some that are exactly the same. I seem to have one. Um, it came with one, but I don't have the other. But I'll try and match it up. I might actually have it in my parts bin but I can easily change that over at a later date. So, carrying on and removing all the old bits, yay. Also, this is a lovely kit to work on. It's nice and easy. There's no, no like fiddly annoying bits. It's all pretty straightforward. So uh, yeah, lovely chassis design. I'll keep the original steering servo as it worked perfectly fine. The front main bulkhead was showing a few stress cracks, so I'll try and replace it if possible. I'll have to take the front end off the car again, but I don't mind. So if I can trace a few of those down. Now the new chassis is on, I need to give it a good polish, but uh, I'm now putting everything back together again and swapping out screws as I go. Still need to get rid of those horrible pink uh, bolts at the front, but they soon disappear. There we go, that's looking much better. So there we go, all back together again. The front was more difficult than the back. Um, it took a bit of time to uh, sort things out. I changed the end uprights to the stronger ones because one was broken. It's not perfect. I'm gonna need to try and find a front bulkhead where it screws through, there's cracks around the edges of the bolts that go through. So I'll need to find one of those to make it absolutely perfect. It's all held together fine. Um, and I, can't, I would even drive it like that, but uh, it's not 100% perfect, but it's all looking very sharp and clean, brand new. No more skid, skid, skid marks. <laughs> no more road marks. <laughs> Uh, across the whole bottom. So replaced, replaced, replaced. I didn't actually replace the arms in the end because they weren't, there's no marks on any of them. So I didn't bother. I got rid of the horrible pink screws. Um, I need to still have a look around, see if I've got any better springs than the blue ones. Um, they, they work quite fine. They're actually a bit too strong for the front really. So I'll see if I can find some slightly softer um, from that point of view. So I'll try and get that front bulkhead. Got to get the shims, like I said before. Next is putting the electronics in. So I've got one of my receivers and that'll do the job. They're fine and it should fit, hopefully, because there's not a lot of space in this chassis. So I'm kind of hoping that's gonna slot in there. Hmm, I'll have to check. It could be a bit of an issue if it's not, because this fits perfectly 
in there, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look and see. Oh, I'm hoping it's going to fit because um, I've got some other potential um, electronic speed controllers that I can use, but I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I think we'll be fine. I think that's going to work perfectly fine for what I need with a bit of luck. I th I, for some reason I had it in my head it was slightly um, bigger but oh, if I cut those off yeah okay if I, if I trim off these little bits we should be good to go. then that should go yes perfect that will actually fit brilliantly so we'll just have one in each bay and then the battery runs down the if you can see that so one in each bay and then the battery goes down the middle but it only just fits so i'm well chuffed about that right let's fit the electronics and i'll be right back My electronics went into the car no problems whatsoever and fitted perfectly in the side pods. Now originally it was designed that you would put the electronic speed controller on the uh, plate on the back of the car but since these fit in each side pod I just left them there. Well there you go, all finished. Took way longer than I thought towards the end there. Um, I have to get a new bulkhead, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, it's been a few hours since I uh, recorded the last segment to this um, video, but uh, apart from that everything else is fine. I did have a problem where the rear wheels were, the rims were hitting the actual arms, so I've messed around with it for a while and I finally figured out that the wheels needed to be pushed out slightly so I um, fitted some spacers also the wheels were very uh, wobbly so I managed to get enough to shim the rears I did excuse me I did find a, enough shims so that the re rears are nice and solid now because they were flapping around and the way that they're built they were actually colliding with the arms so they were like clunky but I've now fixed that completely so that's all good and it's all uniformed and it looks like that's how it's supposed to be, not some dodgy bodge. Electronics are in, everything is now working. I need to set the limits uh, on the, on the uh, transmitter for the steering, but uh, that's fine. So it's pretty much finished. Apart from changing the bulkhead at the front, like I said before, the car is now completely back to mint condition. There's no damage whatsoever on the underside. And it's just like new. So it's taking quite a while to get to this stage, but uh, I'm very happy with it. And I now have a fully mint, fully operational, Dino Blaster. So that's another thing I can tick off the list and moving on to the next thing. Now the next thing in the list, I'm still trying to get my um, Kyosho Optima Mid that I purchased delivered, but being that it's Christmas, all the courier companies are completely crap and they tried to deliver it twice while I was at work and I rescheduled it for yesterday, never showed up. Rescheduled it for day, today, never showed up. Phoned them up, emailed them, nothing back, but then it's the week before Christmas. Now, I'm not that fussed if it doesn't come till after Christmas, but I'm more concerned that it's actually safe and it's okay. It's now stuck at a depot and it's waiting re-delivery. So it turns up when it turns up and I will hassle them. I'm tempted to drive over to the depot tomorrow, but it's miles away. But then I'd rather drive a long way to make sure I've got it safe. Plus, it'd be nice to show you guys before Christmas. What's next on the build list? Well, I need to now work on this. So this is my King Cab. Um, I've done pretty much all the chassis. 
um, new wheels, new underside, um, new rears, new arms. I've got rear uh, arms to put on this, and then I've got to paint the body. The original sticker's turned up, so I'm pretty much itching to go on this. I managed to pick up a mechanical speed controller, which is the correct one, but it's not for this car, so the cables are the wrong length. But I have another one which has the right length, so I'll need to solder them around a little bit. And I've got the mount for the servo. So I've pretty much got everything I need to almost finish this one now, apart from I'm struggling to get a new set of tires. I managed to get these sort of aftermarket tires, which are pretty good, uh, and I'm, I'm happy with them for now until some new ones turn up. Apart from that, um, I'll put a new, better motor in it. So that's coming next over the next two days or so. And then um, I'm going to kick off the XLS, the Schumacher XLS, because I've been itching to put, uh, build that one. So that's next. So I'm just ticking off a few of the little chores before I start another project. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Head over to Facebook, uh, RC Kicks. Uh, there's an RC Kicks group. Also, if you want some RC Kicks stickers, they're available, all for a bit of fun. Anyway, thanks very much. See you on the next one. Bye bye.